Hello there, my name is Gary Hacking. I'm one of the acute care team practitioners at the Royal Blackburn Hospital as part of East Lancashire Hospital's NHS Trust. And today I'm going to be talking to you about proning the conscious patient. Up until now, proning has only been used in intensive care for patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome in very severe cases. With the coronavirus, patients are developing similar symptoms to that of acute respiratory distress syndrome and thus are placed on their front for around 16 hours at a time. International guidelines now recommend this for all patients with coronavirus once they've been intubated and ventilated. It's been postulated that laying patients on their front or proning may benefit patients on ward environments and potentially stave off admissions to intensive care. We're looking to prone all patients who are confirmed or suspected of coronavirus, especially those who are requiring 28% oxygen or above. We're aiming for saturations between 92 and 94%, or 88 to 92 of those at risk of hypercapnia. The patients must be able to move themselves into this position or require very little assistance from staff, but the staff can help where necessary. We shouldn't be looking to prone anybody who's in such severe respiratory distress that they may require immediate intubation. We also shouldn't be proning anybody who has a low blood pressure or a regular heart rhythm. We shouldn't be proning anybody who's agitated or has an altered mental state. And we shouldn't be proning anybody with an unstable spine, recent chest injury or recent abdominal surgery. Possible contraindications but things we can take into consideration are pregnancy between the second and third trimester, morbid obesity, facial injuries, neurological issues such as seizures and strokes or pressure ulcers on the front of the body. To prone, very simply, you put a patient on the front and they should be able to do this themselves or with very little assistance. When you prone, we need to make sure that we're recording the observations before we prone, mainly the saturations, respirations and the oxygen demand on the conscious prone positioning tool. When we ask the patient to move, we need to ensure that the bed is flat. We also need to make sure that the bed is an appropriate height for us to help if necessary. We need to make sure that there are no wires under the patient that could cause pressure damage. And when they're rolling onto the side, make sure it's the side that they feel most comfortable before going onto their front. Once the patient's on the side, then ask them to roll onto their stomach. And from there, move into a swimming position where one arm is up and one leg is up. And then position the head the same side that the arm is up. The main aim is we want to make the patient as comfortable as possible. So laying a pillow under their arm could help or a pillow under their leg. We need to advise the patient to stay in that position for 30 minutes to two hours. This can vary if they become uncomfortable, but that's okay. Once we've moved the patient and got them comfortable again, we need to record the saturations, respiration rate and oxygen demand on the conscious prone positioning tool. And hopefully we should see an improvement. If we don't see an improvement and the patient deteriorates, we need to turn them onto their back, sit them upright and increase their oxygen requirements. We need to follow local guidance and here at ELHG, that's to contact the acute care team on Bleep 113 and we'll come and assist you where we can. Once the patient has spent 30 minutes to two hours in the prone position, we roll them onto the right side and get them comfortable. We record their saturations, respiration rate and oxygen demand before and after the move. After another 30 minutes to two hours on the right side, we then roll the patient onto their back, sat up between 30 to 60 degrees and record their observations before and after the move again. Finally, we roll the patient onto the left side, making sure that they're comfortable and recording their observations before and after. We need to continue this process for as long as needed. And if the patient's oxygen saturations go above 96%, we need to turn the oxygen down. So if they're on 60%, we turn them down to 40% and continue. We need to stop proning if you feel that the patient has severely deteriorated. If their rest rate goes above 35 breaths per minute, or if the patient can't tolerate being on their front, but you do have the options of keeping the patient on the left and right side, which does also work. For suspected and confirmed coronavirus patients, if they can tolerate the positional changes, it's important that we continue it throughout the patient journey. 